Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, here's a good here's a viewer question I like. It says, "Hey Perch, as a lifelong fan of comics, I had always assumed, maybe wrongfully, that one of the biggest appeals and selling points of comics was that somebody created these amazing and larger than life images with nothing more than a pencil and a paper." That's that that's true. That's that's I, at least that's true for me. As a kid who loved to draw, I spent hours in school filling my notebooks with sketches of The Thing fighting Doctor Doom, Spider-Man tangling with Mysterio, Hulk squaring up with Thor, etc. Now I look at a lot of today's comics, and I see a lot of lifeless pages, dull coloring, and even duller sequences of talking headshots extending panel after panel with nothing to capture a kid's imagination. That's a really, really good point. I think a really observant point. Um, so my question to you would be, are kids who like to draw the forgotten demographic? Thanks for your time and channel. Hope to hear a reply. That's an awesome way of looking at it. I love this question. So, and um, it's interesting because I recently, uh, uh, you know, I, my, my daughters like to draw. And it comes and goes. Like, the older one will draw more, and then the younger one will draw more. They don't ever seem to want to draw at the same time. But both, both of them really into drawing. And both of them love to draw what I would call Kirby-like sequences. I mean, they don't draw like Kirby, but they both draw these larger-than-life, like, crazy, out-of-control things and, and filled with imagination. And I could almost tell when they're having a good time or a bad time in school or, or in life by the amount of, of amazing, you know, ideas that they have going on the page. When the stories are more uh, mundane, they're having a harder time in school, with friends, whatever else. And when the pages are just exploding with crazy ideas, uh, they're having a better time. And... I'm going to throw this out there, which I think will be an interesting take. I think that comics are at their absolute best when they're being created for a younger audience filled with imagination. So if you take like Kirby's work and you take Steve Ditko's work and you take uh, Bushima's work and, and Ramita's work and uh, you look at some of that early stuff, um, Gil Kane or, or uh, you know, just, just, uh, you know, Neil Adams, some of the Walt Simonson, some of these just amazing, huge pages with just energy, just crackling off the page, just crazy stuff. Um, it is a kid's dream to pick up that stuff and just see these amazing, astounding sequences, just this bigger than life, you know, energy just bursting off the page. I think that that is the, uh, that is magic that a younger audience, a, a kid, can really get and appreciate. Now, the reality is a lot of adults appreciate that stuff too. Absolutely. You know, I, I, an adult who loves art can look at a Jack Kirby page and say, this is just some tremendous, amazing kind of stuff. And that is, um, that's truly, you know, true magic that you get out of those comics. Uh, but in, in many ways, it's geared to the imagination of a kid. And I think the, the aspect of that is the kind of unrestrained, anything can happen. This is, I'm, I'm kind of venturing with a theory. I don't know that I completely agree with what I'm saying, but just, just testing this out here. As comics became more geared toward adults, meaning... If you're, if the origin to this book, you, you, as a creator of the comic, you're not necessarily thinking, I'm making this for kids. But you may be thinking, if you are, you know, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, you may be thinking, I'm making this for people filled with imagination, which tends to be more of the adults, or sorry, more of the kids than the adults. The adults are going to work. The kids are in school just doing crazy, amazing things. So if the comic is geared to that unrestrained creative freedom, it's, it's better. It's more imaginative. It's, uh, it's, it's huge. It's, it's worlds upon worlds. If the comic is geared toward 
an adult who is going to work, who is, you know, just kind of cynical, kind of down to earth. It's a different book. Now, Watchmen, Dave Gibbons, it's, it's still an amazing piece of work, artistically brilliant, everything else. But I think it's harder to land the magic and the, uh, the kind of amazement in a book like Watchmen, which, again, is a classic. It's all good. But it's going to have less crossover appeal, less magic than, say, Kirby, Simonson, Adams, true, you know, true creative burst of a comic. I think there's something there. I, again, I don't, I don't have the whole theory out, but I think when comics are, are aiming for kind of unrestrained imagination, which skews more toward kids than gritty realism, I think it has a bigger, better, bolder shot at being kind of an amazing piece of work. I think that comics, when it kept the kids in mind, when it kept that audience, that audience of, you know, being able to, uh, you know, believe anything is possible, I think it just expanded the horizon of what that comic could be. And I think the more comics have said that they need to be, you know, relevant to an older audience, I think the, the oftentimes the less they are. A, a truly gifted writer, by the way, and a creator, an artist, can make something amazing for everyone. It's good for adults, good for kids, good for all types of readers. The thing is, I think it's it's easier in a lot of cases to kind of nail that imagination if you're going unrestrained than if you're intentionally kind of holding yourself back or, or trying to, to go for realism. I I don't know. I, I, I look I, I think that um, I think that if you're a comic publisher and you're trying to make comics. In some ways, I think people have viewed making comics for uh, kids as being limiting, as being kind of somehow lesser. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna make if you're gonna make a kids comic, there's less you can do. You would hear a lot of that when they talked about the Comics Code Authority, and you know this book isn't bound by the Comics Authority, so we can do anything we want. But in reality, a lot of people didn't do anything they wanted. They just kind of went for some cursing, maybe light nudity and, and kind of gritty realism. But the comic, you know, saying that we're unrestricted by the Comics Code Authority often made some comics less creative than more. I'm not arguing the Comics Code Authority should come back. Obviously, the Code Authority was a limiting set of rules and, and often hypocritical and, and strangely conflicting. And I don't, I'm not saying the Comics Code Authority was a good thing. But I am saying that when you had to write your comics or, or draw your comics for the unrestrained imagination of a kid, you often came up with more creative, more astonishing work than when you didn't have the shackles of the Comics Code Authority or you're writing for an adult. And I think when you're writing for an adult, there was the desire to limit yourself. Well, you can't do that. It's too crazy of an idea. It's too big of an idea. Nobody would believe that. That's not realistic. I think all of those things, I mean, do you think, I don't know, do you, can you picture Jack Kirby kind of sitting at the drawing table, pen in hand, going, I can't do this. It's not realistic. Jack Kirby never worried about that kind of shit. Jack Kirby just went for an amazing story. And I think that that, as a result, he had more freedom and more creative power to do so. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking, there, your mail sparked a, a thought in my head. And I've thought this before because if you look at a lot of the comics in the Silver Age, a lot of the comics in the 80s, there were bigger and bolder ideas in a lot of cases. Uh, sometimes stupid, by the way. Sometimes those ideas did not work. Sometimes they were cheesy. Sometimes they were half-baked. Lots and lots of times when, you know, they, they, were, they were not, they were campy, they were bad. Plenty of those. But in terms of pure, raw creativity, I think the mind of a kid winds up being a healthier place to write to than the mind of an adult. If we're truly, truly going to do something creative. And I, by the way, I think that financially, 
if you look at what Scholastic has been able to pull off, Dogman, that kind of stuff, feels like uh, financially uh, it's better to write for the mind of a kid as well. I think that uh, that, that seems to have worked out well. I don't know. I, I Like I said, I'm not sold on any of this stuff I'm saying. I'm just kind of thinking as I talk. So I'm curious what you think. What do you think? Is there truth to this? Is it is it that creating comics for the imagination of a kid? Did we get better comics? I'm curious what you all think. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.